The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. Sports! Well, look, I was down there at Soldier Field right at the entrance, in the south entrance, talking to Bears fans out there, trying to get them not to go in. I talked about it for all last week. And people, once I put a picture of me out there, said, whoa, you weren't you weren't kidding, were you? No, I wasn't. When I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do something. And I think that's the only way to send a message to the McCaskey family, to the Bears organization, that we, you and I, in case the producer, are not happy with what we see on the field to a level that's never been seen before in the Bears. I really mean that. This is a laughable, embarrassing you're becoming the butt of late night jokes type of team right now. Not cool. It's not just like, oh, they're struggling, but they're going to get better and they'll be better next year. It's not that situation. We are in a dire straits here. It's never been worse in my lifetime. You know, I've, I've been on this planet a, a hot minute now, and I've never seen not only the Bears play this bad, I've never seen the apathy. That's of the Bears problem. Fans. I've never seen it like this before. I will say, I was inspired talking to Bears fans out front. Uh, and here was too gruff looking older men, they probably have season tickets for 40 years, and wearing Walter Payton and Erlacher jerseys. By the way, no shortage of Payton and Erlacher jerseys. I mean, that's going back a long way now, but those were the most jerseys that I saw, Payton and Erlacher. You know what that means? That means means we have a bad team. It means there's nothing recent to buy. You know know what Bulls jerseys? You see a lot of Jordan and Pippen, not a lot of Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan jerseys flying around. No, but hearing these guys talk, and I'll try to play a little bit of this on my phone, just about trying to get them not to go in, and no one listened, by the way. I talked to about, You're kidding. I talked to about 300 Bears fans. I couldn't get one to take my side on this, which makes me sad, but also I was inspired by their passion of their fandom. Here's a little snippet of when I said, would you not go in with me? Not go in. And here was their reply. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm a Sox fan, too, so I know what it's like to, to, uh, to go to games and, and lose a lot. <laughs> yes, well, the Cubs getting eliminated last night upset me. Oh, being a yeah, well, I can imagine that. But I'm sure you're happy about that. Yeah. Um, so you would no. not hold this sign that says, don't go in for me. You would not no. do that? No, 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 no. yeah, yeah. They're, they're, I mean, McCaskies are only the higher-ups. They're not mm. the people that hire. They hire people to do this. So if you want to look at people to do this, it's got to be polls. Some of those other, Warren, some of those other people. Those are the ones we got to look at. No, I, I, well, listen, I, dis, I, I respectfully disagree with my fellow Bears fans I saw out there. It's interesting they diverted the blame of power to the middle. They didn't go to the top. Most of the time when there's a problem, yeah. you blame the people at the top. They go, well, it's not them. They're only hiring the people. We got to look at the, the people in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Very weird take, yeah, by the way. Very, very weird. Odd. And also, I don't want to be the person that's fired the coach every year. You can't do that and be successful. Uh, but also... You did that for many years. They're still bad. So now we have to come up with something new. Exactly. We can keep saying that. You know, we can go through... All the way through um, Lovey Smith, who's the last coach that won, and he went 10-6, and six, and they fired him at 10-6. and six. Yeah. I want Lovey Smith back. You'd kill for 10-6 now. I'd kill for <laughs> Lovey Smith. I'd run through a wall for Lovey Smith right now. <laughs> so uh, I just want to say I was really... My heart grew two times in size. Uh, talking to all the Bears fans out there in front of Soldier Field, even though no one listened to me, I just respected the energy and the hustle to go in to the toilet bowl, which the Bears blew. The two worst teams in football, a 21-point lead, and lost to the Broncos, who are pathetic. This is what I'm talking about. Now, Justin Fields completed his first 16 passes. The Bears go up 28-7. That was a Bears record, 16 passes in a row in the first half. He was 23 of 24 for 285 yards and four touchdowns in the third quarter. That's about the best quarterback rating in the league. Broncos rip off 24 straight points slowly, and they get there, and Fields had the great day, destroyed by a fumble that the Broncos scooped up on the score and then the interception at the end of the game. But late in the fourth, the Broncos on the 18-yard line, on the Broncos' 18-yard line, they go for it on fourth and one. They could have got the field goal and went up. They chose not to with four minutes left. Now, I'm not sure I completely hate that. However, it is the Bears. Now, if you are, I don't know, the 49ers or whoever, I expect you to go for that. Yeah, the, the Eagles are making that conversion. They're yeah. undefeated. They're the best team in football. The tush push they yes, have going exactly. on there. Uh, the Bears, who haven't done anything, should not go for it. They didn't get it. The Broncos marched down 51-yard field goal, win the game. <sighs> Here's where I'm at. Okay. Longtime Bears fan. Sure case. Chiefs, fan, or Ch- Chiefs game last week is like, oh, this is embarrassing. They look awful. This yeah. is terrible. Right. I think this week was worse because they had it set up storybook ending-wise. Fields has this great game. Broncos kick the field goal to go ahead. 
Bears get the ball back with under two minutes left. They can march down the field, and a quarterback worth anything would at least have gotten them close to the end zone, maybe in field goal range, worst case scenario. Instead, Justin Fields threw an interception, and it was very much a, like, oh. He's, he's that guy he's again. Not, he's not the guy. He was the guy in the first half. It looked like the last year Justin Fields making miracle plays happen and doing th- you know throwing the ball nicely. Uh, so weird things with this game. Chase Claypool, the receiver, was inactive. And he stayed home. Yeah. And active players usually show up for the games, by the way. I, as much as I love to pile on the Bears, this is not a Bears problem. Chase Claypool is a very talented wide receiver who the Pittsburgh Steelers, a top-notch organization, gladly shipped off to Chicago. And now Chicago is having issues with him as well. I think this is more about the player rather than the team. Let this be a lesson to all the ladies out there. Mm. You think you can change a man. Mm. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> go, with what, go with your feeling on what he is, and you cannot change a guy. Uh, so the Bears now currently hold the number one and two spot in next year's draft? That's right, because they have the Panthers pick. The Panthers, the other uh, winless team, not undefeated, rather winless team in the NFL. This is unbelievable. So, unbelievable. Wow. And, and by the way, now here's the stat. The first team in NFL history to allow 25 or more points in 14 consecutive games. That's a lot of that, points. That they lost, by the way. There's a funny meme going around that ever since Elon Musk bought Twitter, that the Bears are the only professional sports franchise that hasn't won a game. So think about it this way. You know, Cubs got eliminated from postseason contention this weekend. MLB, MLB regular season is now done with. The last time the Bears won a football game, a regular season game, we were in the 2022 MLB regular season. Good Lord. Almost a year ago. We're yeah. approaching an October time frame when they haven't won a game. And they got to play the Commanders on Thursday Night Football. Turn around quick, who almost beat the Eagles, the Super Bowl team, yesterday. Yeah, Commanders are pesky. I want I want no part of that. I think this is going to be another tough week for the Bears. Good Lord, help us. Okay, uh, the Cubs season's over after Jake Berger's Marlins won and clinch on Saturday night. Very anticlimactic. I thought it was going to be something that went down today with the Marlins having to play four outs today and, you know, see what would happen. Now the Marlins are in, the Cubs are out. They had a 92% chance to make the playoffs yeah, September 6th, not even a month ago. And then it didn't happen. There they are. They yeah. just blew September. I blew really, it. you know, look, I'm, I'm the White Sox fan here. I get it. I was stunned watching all this take take shape. You know, I put money on the Cubs not only making the playoffs, I put money on the Cubs winning the division at the beginning of September. Because uh-huh. I was like, they're, my God, they're on a roll right now. I think they're going to roll past the Brewers. And right when I put money on them, total collapse. That's what happened. Yeah. Also, uh, just to put this one out there before we end sports here, is uh, the White Sox finished 61 and 101 on the season. Well, you got to bring that up. They're not relevant. Nobody was talking about them. You're just rubbing it in now. I, uh, you know what? I apologize to my Southsiders there. How dare there. you? I, I, I... The Q101 Morning Crew on Q101. All right, let's get into it. 312 591 8300 to compete in Clash with Kenzie. Now, Kenzie is off. Uh, she coming back tomorrow at a vacation day there, a little uh, to visit some family. Uh, people get concerned when they don't hear somebody, and they, you know, she's pregnant. So no, everything's fine. Just visiting some family. We wish her well. She'll be back tomorrow. So today in class with Kenzie, I tried to offer up case as a, but you didn't want to do it. Just like the haunted house, you just don't want to go in and do I'm it. I'm a little scared. You're a little scared of doing trivia. So you'll compete against me. Bring it, big dog. By the way, I don't think I've ever... I've only done it like three times. I've never lost. Yeah, we did. I think back in May, you played a few games of trivia, but that's it. This is, you know, you've been here a long time now, but uh, very new to trivia. Uh Uh-huh. I wish you the best, big guy. I mean, as the host and the game show host, I give it to you, but... phone line's lit up. Holy cow. Look at that. Well, we have John Mulaney tickets for the next show uh, coming up another show at Rosemont Theater if you beat me in trivia. So bring it. Let's go. I dare you. Come at me. 312-591-8300. In the meantime, while you're dialing... Just a funny piece of audio over the weekend. Uh, Friday night, a Miss USA pageant and Miss Utah won. But the person hosting didn't remember her name, so just kept saying Utah. Congrats, Utah. It just made me laugh. And now, Miss USA 2023 is Utah! <laughs> Utah won. Okay, that's fair. One Utah. Her name is not Utah. It's Noelia Wright. 
No, it's Noelle Yavoit. I'm sorry. See, it's a tough name. Maybe that's why she kept saying Utah. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. You can't defeat her. She's too powerful. Clash with Kenzie. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Q. 101. And Kenzie out today, back tomorrow. A little family thing, but she's okay. She'll be back tomorrow. So take it on the big dog today. That would be me. I have a 100% record. I only played, I think, four or five times, but I win every time. Is that right? That's right. I can't remember a loss. Now, okay. if someone remembers one, they can come back at me, and maybe I'll say my bad. But I think I've won every time I've played. I feel like I'm going to pull up the podcast and prove you wrong, but I digress. I probably lost like every time <laughs> yeah. I've played. Uh, but here we go. Uh, Jason checking in from Naperville. Jason, ahoy. Tell us something really quick about yourself. Ahoy, how are you guys doing? I uh, uh, just went, went on a fishing trip last weekend and was about as good as a beer season so far. So, you know. Oh, jeez. You know, I love that people go fishing. And I know this may sound very naive, but I feel like people have forgotten about fishing. And I never fished. My dad wasn't into it because he was a city guy, grew up in the hood. So it's like, I never took me fishing as a kid. And I wish I had a dad that took me fishing. And I just think it's good for society that fishing still exists. Absolutely. It's a good time just to relax and have some beers with friends, too. Case is, <laughs> yeah, Kate's looking at me kind of funny. Well, I'm it. hung up on the fact that you said your dad grew up in the hood. Yeah, he did. Okay. Yeah, he did. All right. And so, like, you know, he didn't go into the wilderness. You know, he didn't go out there. And... No, I look, I I love our crew members out there in the in the sticks, but I'm a city guy. I have no desire. I went fishing as a kid. I have no desire to ever go fishing again. See, I want to go fishing. Nah. I, would you take me fishing, Jason? Sure would. <laughs> but you didn't catch anything, but it doesn't matter. It's a good afternoon with beers and conversation and goofing off. Exactly. Give me each other wedgies. <laughs> well, not that, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> definitely plenty of beer, though. All right, here we go. You're competing against me for the John Mulaney tickets at the Rosemont Theater. Second show's added. So here we go. Uh, first one to five wins. Listen carefully. If I get one wrong, you can steal a point. I can do the same with you. Should I even flip a coin or will there be controversy over that? Let him go first, Brian. Be nice. Okay, I'm not. there'll be controversy that I flip the coin. So, yeah, go ahead. You go ahead first, Jason, and uh, Case will ask you the questions right here. Let's go. All right, Jason. Other than the Chicago Bears, who is currently the only other 0-4 team in the NFL? Uh, I just saw this. Oh, it's looking record. Um, I'm going to give it to Brian. Brian's going to know it. I don't know. have the answer. <laughs> You're going to give it to me. You're going to pass. Yeah, he knows it. I'm going to say that would be the Panthers. That is indeed the Panthers. Brian is up one nothing. Brian, yes. Mexican Independence Day occurs in which month? Uh, it occurs in September. I remember because I was caught in the parade, which I wanted to go be a part of that as well as go fishing. Uh, but they didn't want me yeah, in there. They didn't want you in that parade. <laughs> they didn't want me in that parade. <laughs> they, they, they were all celebrating just fine without me. We're good. Thank you. That's too bad, because I love my place, Coyotes, in Pilsen. Uh, also, I love uh, Cafe El Tapatio on Ashland up on Lakeview. Two of the best Mexican places you can go to. I, I, the food is unbelievable. All right, are you done pandering? I am. All right, thank you. All, all right, good. Brian's up 2 to nothing. Jason, Krusty the Clown is a clown on what cartoon show? The Simpsons. Oh, Jason's on the board. Ha, ha, ha. Ugh. That's my crusty the Clown impersonation. That wasn't bad. Thank you. That wasn't bad. Thank you. Who was the first person to teach Luke Skywalker the ways of the Jedi, Brian? Well, that would be, listen, I wish he was my dad because I think he would have took me fishing. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> we'll unpack why you wish Obi-Wan was your dad later, but you are correct. <laughs> my dad My dad had the force, and he certainly told me a lot of great things that I didn't take advantage of. But All right, well, you're up three to one. Also, I'm a horrible swordsman. Terrible. Why do you know that? Uh, because I took a fencing class. I had to in high school. You had to take a fencing class? Yeah, I was failing French, and they said take a fencing <laughs> class. I can't remember why that, that worked out, and I failed that class. And so I, I, I'm lucky I got out of high school, Jason. Oh, my God. <laughs> J- Jason, you ever gone fencing before? I have never been fencing. All right, well, that's <laughs> too bad. All right, well, no. you're down three to one. It's back to you, Jason. Which pro skateboarder was given his very own video game series starting in 1999? you got to be Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk is right. He is right. Three to two. Back to Brian. Which C did Moses part? Which C? He parted the... Oh, God. Um, and three. Uh, two? The, the black One. C. Nope. Oh. Jason? Uh, He parted the... Was it the Red Sea? It was the Red Sea tie ball game. Damn, I skipped Sunday school that day. <laughs> you were going fishing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All or right. fencing. Yeah, fencing. Jason, it is three to three. It is back to you. How many U.S. state names begin with the word new? I just need a number here. Three? Not three. Uh, so it's got to be four. It is four. Brian goes okay. back ahead. New York, New Jersey, New Mexico, and New Orleans. No, I'm kidding. I don't, I, <laughs> wait, what's the fourth one? I, I, New Hampshire. New Hampshire. I just guessed four because he said three. I didn't. I couldn't remember New Hampshire either, all but right. All right, there you go. I'll take that point, though. Well, Brian, you can win here and give everybody listing a shot at John Mulaney tickets with the correct answer. I like this. Eleanor Roosevelt yep. was the first first lady to wear what in public? Um, she wore a mohawk. <laughs> she did not wear a mohawk, Brian. Good Lord. I thought I saw a picture. Jason, what did Eleanor Roosevelt uh, become the first lady to wear in public? Um, I, I guess a suit. I doubt it, but a suit. Maybe? Pants. Pants? Mm. All the first ladies were pantsless pants before that? <laughs> they were dress wearers. They were skirt wearers. She was the first one to wear pants uh, in recorded history. What were they, baggy jeans? <laughs> yeah, they were Jankos. <laughs> she wore Mary Todd Lincoln wore Jankos jeans. <laughs> Big Goth fan. Oh, she, loved, she loved the cure. Yeah, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> All right, well, it's still four to three. It okay. is back to Jason. It's exciting. Jason, what band began performing at the Sphere in Las Vegas over the weekend? Um, the Sphere in Las Vegas. All right, and three? No. No, Two? I'm not going to have an idea. Oh, Go for it. Jason. He's just got the band, buddy. Oh, listen, I hate to take this from him and keep my record intact, but that was you, too. It that was, was you, too. Indeed, you, too, Brian. My record stands intact, at least in my memory, that I've never lost at trivia. <laughs> All right. Hey, but you have a great day, buddy. I appreciate you checking yeah. in, okay? You guys as well. Take care. All right. Should we do this right now? Let's, uh, yeah, let's do it right now. How about it? 312 591 8300. God bless the baby. Uh, Caller 10. Everybody calling, including Jason, can call back uh, for John Mulaney tickets, Rosemont Theater, second show, Friday, December 22nd. The Thursday show was sold out. The tickets are on sale now, and you can go get them from our friends at Live Nation and Brian and Kenzie here on Q101. The Q101 Morning Cruise Clash with Kenzie on Q101. Well, listen, we have more free tickets coming up if you don't get those at 8. We announce Q101's Twisted Christmas 2023, and we'll give away tickets to every night we're doing. Now, a little flashback to Twisted last year. Bob Moses, what a unique performance. Spine-tingling. Bob Moses at Q101's Twisted Christmas last year. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. All right, that's Bob Moses at Q101's Twisted Christmas Last year, we're about to, in 20 minutes, announce the Q101 Twisted Christmas for this year, 8 a.m. We're going to play all the bands. I'm going to tell you what it is. Free sale and have free tickets for every night of Q101's Twisted Christmas coming up. I'm really excited. This is the, this is the, uh, the event that I look forward to every year. For us, it's uh, almost a homecoming event of sorts. It's the one time of the year that you and I and Kinsey and... Brian Phillips and people behind the scenes are all together in one room partying with all of our listeners. I personally am. I, I love the lineup this year. I'm very excited to unveil it. Don't be like Kenzie and like when you get, that's why she's off the emails, like drop a name right now. No, Don't do no, that. The, the problem is so when we make the social post for all of the bands, I'm the one that posts those. And they're sitting in the drafts right now, and it's always uncomfortable oh. for me. Like, I have to make sure I hit draft and not publish. I'm afraid every year that I'll leak the lineup. If you want to, uh, you know, distract Case a little bit, go ahead and call him, text him, and get him to actually hit, you know, send by mistake while he's talking to you on the phone. I'm not like a rat distracted by cheese. It's going to be harder than that, That's I think. That's exactly how I picture you, actually. <laughs> so, the twist announcement coming up at 8, and all the tickets. Oh, it's going to be so good. And uh, just make sure you're here at 8 o'clock. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101.